What's up guys, I hope that you've been well. What you're about to watch is part two of my ENFP sister Jenna and I answering your questions about NE, extroverted intuition, ENFPs, um, that you submitted probably about two months ago. Um, both of these parts are filmed on the same day, uh, but it's taken me over a month to get part two out because each of these videos took me a whole day to edit. And I'm not really at the point with you guys yet where I want to release raw, unedited footage of me and my sister talking for hours. Um, can't guarantee that I'll ever get to that point, to be honest. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you learn something about NE or ENFPs or the ESFP-ENFP relationship. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below and thank you again for watching and thank you for your question submissions for this video. Next question. What's something hard to understand about the other's SE slash NE? Something that's hard for me to understand about your NE would be the fact that they're exploring it in their head is enough for them. Like, yeah, so right. when we were growing up, not so much anymore, Jenna doesn't do this anymore, but growing up, she would like explore an idea and throw something out there and I'd get really excited about actually going to- We should do this to, thing, like let's do yeah, this. Yeah, and then I'd get really excited about going to experience it and then it like, she'd be like, oh no, like she's lost motivation just by the fact that she's talked about it and like got that out there. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. So my brother and I, my brother's an ENTP and we would often laugh about like, you know, if we want to explore a new skill, we're like, sometimes it's just enough to kind of think about doing the thing and you're like, yeah, I could do that. I'm fairly confident I could do that. Okay, that's enough. Like I don't have to actually do it. Yeah. But um, not so much anymore because like, I mean, actually no, let's be real, I still do that. But I, I would say that I understand your any pretty well because I've grown up with you. Like recently I found it helpful your like descriptions of se and like because i've been trying to like tap more into my se just for fun kristen we had this conversation like what are you thinking about like when you do the dishes like when you wash the dishes <laughs> what are you thinking about and she's like i don't know like maybe the smell of the soap you know maybe i'll think about something that happened that day and like maybe i'll just like wonder about like how nice the trees look or something like that i didn't I'm say like, any of that how are you not thinking about <laughs> She's just gone with the impression, the impression that she got from the conversation. No, but like, I didn't say like, any of that. I'm not thinking about any of those things. I don't think about things that happened that day. When I pressed you, you were like, maybe I'll be thinking oh, yeah, about maybe. these things. What I'm mostly thinking like, about is how good the music is making me feel because there's always music yeah. on and just like, yeah. I'm not thinking, I'm just being. That's and I essence. couldn't accept that I'm answer. Being. So I pressed you further and you were like, maybe, maybe I'm thinking, thinking about right, like yeah. the soap or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, Essie is just like, please insert cricket noises there. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like how I don't I don't understand. Yeah. Like how are you not contemplating the cosmos? How because are you not contemplating whether universals are distinct entities or just mental concepts? Someone <laughs> asked that question. Someone asked that question. I'm like, no, I um, don't believe in a you know an actual platonic heaven that's like yeah. existing. Yeah. Unless I die and find out that uh, there's a perfect universal of genesis. Of which I am just I'm gonna cut that off right there. I'm gonna as cut an that instantiation off right there. that's imperfect. <laughs> yeah, so SE is just being, and I think that's what Jenna struggled to understand about me, the fact that I'm just out of my head most of the time. And just doing yeah, just feeling, experiencing things. So I would say that. that's it. And also I can't understand the jumping from tangents when I like want to get back to that and I point. Yeah. And I'm like, why do you have to just be doing all these things all the time? Yeah. Like I'm like, why can't you just like sit and do nothing? I can sit and do nothing. I've refined that art. Um, yeah. Oh, can I though? Yeah, you couldn't. I'm going to say yeah because I'm being like generous to you in this video. <laughs> yeah, what is nothing though? Who can actually sit and do nothing? Because you're what thinking. What is nothing? You're thinking. You're getting into that first function. I'm just getting into my first function by getting up and doing. Yeah, love that. The next question is, if you could switch your MBTI types for a whole year, would you? Switch with each, each other. other. No. I think not for a year because like my husband and children would be super confused as to why I'm now all of a sudden so like spontaneously <laughs> wanting to go to the beach or hiking yes. or something. My husband would be like, yes, let's do it. I mean, You'd be like, why can I suddenly not think deeply about this? <laughs> Jacob would be like, so I'm married to an INTP, right? And he'd be like, so, you know, I just feel like the weight of just like all these bureaucratic systems in the world and I just don't feel like I fit in anywhere in these like this job world, this corporate world. And I'd be like, ah, oh, okay, that's fine. Let's let's have a beer and forget about it. Let's okay, I knew you were gonna completely undersell SEs oh, there. Oh I don't understand it, it's my eighth function. Let's forget let, about yeah. that point that's important to you, husband. Yeah, we're totally like that. Looks so fair. And what would I be like with any as top function? You'd be like, 
you'd be like, you'd like all of a sudden be hit by this wave of like existential dread. No, not really. You'd just be like, oh my gosh, I'm at love. Whoa, seventh grade teacher? What are you doing in my thoughts? Where did you appear from? Everything, go away! Go You're like, away. wow, girl I went to kindergarten with and still like, like miss in my heart of hearts. <laughs> Where, why are you here? Oh. I do, I do. I had these beautiful friends. I just okay, beautiful stop friends it. That's beautiful, school. but this is the hand. <laughs> I'll high five for that idea. <laughs> yeah, no, we wouldn't switch types for a year. I would switch for a day just out of curiosity, but yeah. Would no. you switch types if you, but like, I think once you're like lived into your type, you love your type, like, would you switch? Yeah, I just kind of fathom being another way and I like the way I am, so, but that, that's of course because it's the only way I've ever known, so why would I want to be something else? Same, but it would be new information about a person and their inner working, so I think I would still... I'd appreciate that again just for a short time. Though. You'd be like the experience experience of being someone else. Yeah, I'd be like, I'd be like, I can take this, you know, and apply it to my future relationships with people of this. Yeah. Like, and I'd be like, like, wow, this is going to help me understand this person, like, and their yeah. thoughts and, like, understand humanity better. Okay, last sister question. Do you think you are like your stereotypes? And we have to answer this about each other. Um, yes and no. Obviously, the stereotypes are there for a reason. The dominant function, probably, of everyone is where you're going to see the stereotype most because most people are like super into their dominant function right so you are like the stereotype in that you are like woo experiences but i also think that kristen i don't know why i keep doing this because i've but, done this like yeah. seven times i was gonna say um what was i gonna say kristen is it yeah so kristen i think you are an exceptionally like se ESFP, like yeah. even among other ESFPs I know who are, like love variety of experiences in their lives and stuff. But I think you are like exceptionally like into experiences. Yeah, which just makes right? me think I need to tone it down more. No, but you ha no, but you have like compared to like even a few years ago, right? Oh yeah. So I think in that way you're like your stereo, like you're more than your stereotype. Mm, but I think I with any stereotype, really, it doesn't obviously it doesn't get at the whole picture of a person. And you are not your type. You're actually something completely different. Mm. The type is just how you understand your cognitive <laughs> processes, right? Yeah. Obviously, like you have a faith, so that influences like how you live as well. And I think also the ESFP stereotype doesn't go anywhere near like how intelligent Kristen is, right? Oh. Like how super Thank intelligent you. she is or like how like warm, like warm and actually like caring about people you are. You're really like really caring about people, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think comes like obviously ESFPs care about people, but I think the stereotype is like... Yeah, stereotypes of ESFP are like party animal, ditzy like a little bit airheaded, those kind yeah. of things. It's, it's like, because like, we don't if, apply the filter you must before have we say things. You must have mistyped yourself because you're smart. <laughs> like, you know. Okay, the way that I would say Jenna is like a stereotype is that um, just that bottom SI and lack of SE, I suppose, like, or minimal usage of SE means that she can sometimes forget, like, how she's present in the physical world and be not so aware of what's going on around her. Or sometimes she has, like, a wardrobe malfunction and she knows it's there, but like she just doesn't care about it. Or um, sometimes she she will be like late to something. You know you're late, but like it's okay. Like it's not the end of the world to you. In the same way, if someone else is late, it's not the end of the world to you. Though you do, par uh, you do like to be on time to things, and that's important to you. I love that you added that in because that is a value of mine. It's like be probably because it comes out of being late to things when I was young, but it's now a value of mine to incorporate. Like I want to be on time i don't want to be keeping people waiting mm. she's she's definitely like the stereotype in the sense of like diving from concept to concept and tangent to tangent like yeah. every enfp i've met is actually like that but and entps like, a, i mean there's a reason it? why they're they are yeah. they, they are the stereotypes it's because that's what any is like just loves exploring that ideas, is what it is so. you couldn't not be that i yeah. think dominant any users can't, can't not, not be, be that. like that and sometimes she'll like um bash into things or fall over. Oh my gosh, all the time. So I, <laughs> as much as I want to be like, I, I am not like my stereotype, darn it. That one is extremely true. And I think just one more thing, if I may, um, one more way that Kristen is like, her stereotype is that she is the life of the party. Like she can really get people to have fun. Like you're really good at like, like getting people to like have fun and just feel the festive, like Mm. spirit or like get people on their feet get people, I really like, want to draw keen. SE out of everyone and she's good at like making people feel like enthusiastic but as we just said like with an any user can't help but be the tangent type it's like SE users can't help but be that kind of like movers and shakers like movers, yeah, exactly. like in that sense in, yeah. yeah so 
Okay, now moving on to specific ENFP questions. First question, what is something that people don't know or understand about ENFPs that you can explain? Okay, so again, disclaiming, this is just my personal uh, like opinion about this. Um, and just speaking from my experience as a person who has ENFP tendencies, this won't apply for everyone, obviously. What was the question again? Sorry. What is oh, something? Yeah, something that you, yep. Okay. Sorry. You had your like act. I know. Words on well. So the first thing I would say is that EN ENFPs are actually really super competent and capable people. I should put it in easy like terms to understand with like the function stacks and stacks and things. Like if you're, you know, again, talking about like well integrating your functions, if, if you work from top down. So if we go like any, right, we're great at brainstorming. We can come up with an idea, something we want to do, or like collaboratively brainstorm. We're great at that too. Um, and then, you know, filtering that through our value system. Is this something worth doing? Is something, this something that sits right with us to do? Um, and then we're actually very capable at making plans around the existing systems. Um, we don't love to be in that place of like working with systems and structures and that sort of thing. But when we get into that, if it's well developed and we're trying to develop that, we can be really effective at getting things done within the systems around us or, you know, bending the rules a little bit or whatever, but we're really capable at that. And then the SI like handles the details, like if you're healthy and integrated and practice this a lot because it doesn't come naturally. Even ENFPs sometimes just want to live in the meme of themselves and they don't want to like, you know, younger kind of ENFPs. I certainly was like, this was like SI, who has time? Like lame. But we can be super, super, super like competent at whatever like challenges put in our way. If 100%. it's like in alignment with our interests and what 100%. we want to do and what we're passionate about. Yeah. Um, and then the next thing about ENFPs, I think, is that we are really good, really, really good at rallying people together and motivating other people to unlock their strengths and use their strengths, right? So if we're in like a room full of people and there's a task that needs to be done and everyone's kind of feeling like, lukewarm about it or like oh you know we're really good at like finding a way to get everyone like motivated to achieve like do the task and like you can do it you're awesome like the yeah. world needs you like you're great people which have is often very said true that. people have often said that about jenna i feel yeah and it's very true like i wholeheartedly believe that which comes like segues nicely into my next point which is that we genuinely love you <laughs> like genuinely. i cannot emphasize this enough we love you like if we express interest in you if we're healthy and like a good person, I guess. Like if we express interest in you, it's genuine. It's not, we don't put fake interest into people. We're gonna be your biggest cheerleader. We are so happy for you when you succeed. A healthy ENFP. So like things about yeah, ENFP, and I, I hope I'm healthy, but um, yeah, you know, think like we really like, um, I'm gonna say I, cause it's just, I love to see people chasing their dreams. I love to see people just going for it. And I'm like a hundred percent behind you. If you like, again, if your values align with mine, obviously, but like a hundred percent behind you and like anything you want to achieve and anything you believe and want to like pursue, like, yes, yes. Power to you. Awesome. So we, you know, if you have an ENFP in your life and they're expressing that to you, like it's sincere and it's heartfelt. And we like, honestly, I can honestly say like, I, there's not a person that I've met who I was not like, yes, like, you know, I feel great about them doing their thing. Like, and I like most people. I'd say. Another thing uh, that's important, I think, to know about the NFPs is, and is often like weirdly misunderstood. And I think you've said in one of your previous videos, a similar thing. And I think maybe this is another way we're similar is that we also need to just like, as much as we love you and are friends with you and we love you. We also just need to like Take disappear. <laughs> I remember Kristen was telling me this story about how she like spent this really nice night like chatting with this friend and like bonding and stuff and then just like disappeared off the radar. And then that friend was like, but we had a really nice time. Like, and Kristen was like, oh yeah, like I still, obviously like I care about you, like obviously like, but it's just like, you need to understand we need for ENFPs, right? Um, we need that time to just go off and be in our dominant function, right? To have time to explore, explore. to have time to like energize us because that's what, what's going to mm -hmm. energize us is being in that space. Because again, be like, and maybe this is a good time to say it, whereas like extroverted feeling very much depends, is a function that depends on other people. Extroverted intuition doesn't depend on other people to get its energy. Yeah, same as SE. That's yeah, exactly. Least, yeah. So extroverted sensing depends on experiences in the world. Like I can be alone all day, but if I'm out like the, the drive to Jenna's house with the windows down and the hair and then like the loud music, 
I was alone the whole time, but I was yeah, so energized by that's it. That's so true. Like yeah. I, I don't need people around for me to be like getting energy from my any, right? Yeah. But it's always more fun to do like a collaborative brainstorm with but someone, I, with yeah. someone who gets with it someone who's like, actually into it exactly. and like gets it. That's why EPs need time to have that time and that dominant function because yeah. we can be with people, but we're still getting drained because that function is somehow not being explored. Yeah. So. so the point of all this is like, if you have an ENFP in your life, it's really important to understand that ENFPs do need that time to disappear. You have to let them have the freedom to do that. And EPs in general, like EPs, we need our freedom to like feel free. Right. So for you, it's like freedom of experience. For me, it's like freedom of exploration. Freedom yeah, of course. Yeah, not like goes without saying. Not like going to be free and just do like not irresponsibly, self-destructive, immoral things. Like of course, freedom to like it healthily exist in that space. Another thing is that ENFPs, because our social persona is like really um, bubbly and like out there, like you know, we're we're quite we're people, people. We're like outgoing and things like that, um, and we're like we make stupid jokes and we're like <laughs> we're really really deep thinkers and we can be like we're really smart in our own way right. if you have like an enfp friend and you want to listen to them just talk about just sit and ask them a question just like so what do you think about this like topic or like this issue in the world or this like concept and then you know let them let them just talk they love that next question is it difficult to address slash identify someone else's needs with fi which is about your own needs and your feelings no, because any we're really good at picking up on like vibes and expressions and like reading people and and I think we're sensitive to other people's needs because we're so, we so value our own needs. You'd relate to you got yeah. FI. FI we, cares we, about selves. We value our own needs and we can we can recognize that I am a self that is a self that also has needs. And you do. yeah, yeah. So it's like that you do you thing, right? But Even like that's not always helpful. Yeah, so we don't love you do you when it comes to like, oh, you can, you know, go and like destroy the world. <laughs> or like, hey, bad guy, go take over the world. Like, no, don't do that. Obviously, there are rules and systems and socially appropriate things. And that's and all good. Morality. That's fine. And morality, which I believe is objective. Um, topic for another time. And no, no, um, I'm not promising you that video. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, it's not hard because FI... I think recognizes that there are Sucks. there's me and my needs and there's other people and other needs. We're very good at knowing that other people are distinct individuals who are different from us, and we want them to respect our um, individuality and autonomy. So we naturally we can even and I say we because I also have um, fi fi auxiliary second function. Um, we can sometimes even identify other people's feelings fast, faster than they can yeah. if they're a bottom FI or FE user. Yeah. We ha really, really have a really good intuition about how people are probably feeling, but I still like to give them the benefit of like telling me themselves, like asking straight up, because that's just better. Yeah, absolutely. I, re um, I respect that and love that as an S who, yeah. I mean, so many people you can have be read, wrong. You can be so wrong. many people have read into my feelings and yeah. been wrong. And I'm like, Same. I didn't give you any indication I that I felt that way. I think that so much yes. that you think that I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I tried yeah, my best just to asked do that. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the, the miscommunications that happen because of such is life. It's fine. Projection of mm -hmm. your own things onto other people. We're all human. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. What are some ENFP stereotypes you don't like? One that I don't like the most and find the least true about myself is the um, the whole thing of, oh, we, like ENFPs can't focus or any dominant people can't focus on something for a long period of time. Like, I think that's such a cop out. Like, FI takes its passions and is like obsessed, like, you know, into, like really knows what it wants. If I'm interested in a topic and there's like a 700 page book, of course I'm going to sit down and read it. Like, Maybe just like the act of sitting down is like hard or whatever, but I'm going to read it like as if you can't be disciplined and develop like, and that's the thing. The stereotypes are based on like the most raw unfiltered version of the personality type, obviously. And mm. yeah, there are true things about it, but yeah, ENFPs can sit down and focus on something we're interested in yeah. or, and even things we're not interested in. If you're just a person who's interested in human development and developing areas that you think are important to develop, then yeah, you can sit down and 
focus on something. Any type can, like, ESFPs can as well, despite the stereotype. Absolutely. Like, absolutely focus, especially if FI values it. Yeah, absolutely. Another one is that ENFPs have a bad memory. I'm really good at remembering how I felt about things and the vibe of a thing. I can't give you specific examples, which is really frustrating, but I know, like, I personally know a bunch of ENFPs who have really good memories and can recount details, like, like really, really well. I mean, so yeah, I don't like think SI fourth. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's a stereotype that doesn't always have to be true. I mean, probably like a large proportion of ENFPs might have bad memories. I don't know. Mine's terrible. I'm, I'm terrible. At m I can't remember what I've said during this the whole time we've sat together. I just don't know what I'm saying half the time. <laughs> so another thing I touched on is that ENFPs can be really intelligent. We're really into like I think just philosophy, which is basically like exploring systems of thought, is like. Our bread and butter. I've said that before, bread and butter. Um, it's a great phrase. Yeah, I think we're really, like, we're really into metaphysical things, right? Um, and yeah, we're really into, <laughs> yeah, you're essing out massively. Um, yeah, so we, you know, we've got a very specific kind of intelligence and it's really, when you develop it, it can be really, like, perceptive and insightful and, like, that was a joke, I'm not bored, and I also really like philosophy, actually, so... Yeah, so I have an again, FI another... interest in it. Exactly, right? <laughs> I needed to tell people so, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, e ENFPs, comment down below uh, the ways that you think that you're intelligent, because you are, and I want to hear about it. Okay, moving on. Um, blah, blah, blah. Please moving on. Yep. Please moving on. Okay, yeah, the thing of, like, ENFPs being, like, fickle or flighty, right? We like, we just, it's like that anything. We just like exploring different things. It doesn't mean that we don't value the things we've already explored and don't, like, love those things. Um, it's just that we are interested in new things, right? I don't know. Does that make us fickle and flighty? I don't know. Comment down below. <laughs> just because you're exploring new things doesn't mean that you can't be finish something or, like, hone yeah. back to something that you've already explored Seriously, and, like, once, flesh that Once out something or someone is inside that fi heart it's not leaving we we like to meet new people and things like that and our existing friends might feel like oh are we even as important to you as these other people that you are like meeting and talk <sighs> talking to or like so that sort of thing but we you are like you are you are you're in our heart like those people who are like your core like people you love so much like you may treat them in a similar way externally to like new people who you're equally interested in right mm. to a certain degree Mm. Um, but it doesn't mean that you don't love and will be like fiercely yeah. loyal. I mean, to it those makes people. sense given that it's a gathering and exploring function. It lol, both it. lol, both of our functions are gathering and exploring functions that they could appear as fickle because they're like new thing, new thing, new thing. But we hope that this video can make you understand that that's not really what's going on underneath the. Yeah, surface. it's not like we're like, oh, we're throwing you out without we're changing friends, like we're changing shirts or something like that. Like, no, we just want to. That was the se tone, the te tone. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> we just want to. Yeah. We just want to explore. Like it doesn't mean that we don't value more than the other people. Jenna likes to when I've said something, say it again in a different way. Yeah. So Jenna will give like a monologue and then I'll summarize it in a few sentences and then she'll like need to say that <laughs> sentence in a new way. That's so true. Like when you watch this back, so you'll see that's exactly oh what's God. happening. I'm gonna be like, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I do yeah. that. <laughs> Is that really what my hair looks, looks like, like from, from the, the back? back? Comment down below if you get the reference. So the next thing is like, just like how ENFPs always make things about themselves, which we do because in the sense of like, someone has an idea and as a point of connection, we want to like say, yes, I get that. And also here, like that's our way of testing out if we can play without any with that person in a way. Like someone will say something like, yes, and then this is connected to this other thing. And what, what people might not realize is that's how we're, like we're showing you that part of our personality, that, that exploratory part of our personality. And a lot of people are like, oh, this person just wants to talk about themselves a lot. Because the temptation is always to be like, oh, they've said something interesting and I want to like explore on top of that oh, or like talk yeah, more about that. That can be so but annoying. To, yeah, I think every, I think we have like a social duty to like people we're with to not like make it about us. It's not really about us. It's about an idea or like a, you know, point of connection that we want to like show yeah. the person that we understand and that sort of thing. But I think we should be really aware of how you are influencing or maybe dominating a conversation. Um, I think that's an ongoing thing that we always have to be thinking about when we're on our like socially on mode at a party or something like that. Um, but also like it's easy to just sit back and listen to other people at a party too. So maybe it's like just with, yeah. Sorry, could you just general. excuse me for a moment? <sighs> 
Next question is, what is some of your SE fails? However, we've already addressed that, so I'd we like have to talked move about on. that. Next question. <laughs> How quickly was I? I know. <laughs> yeah. What's a good way to encourage an ENFP? A good way to encourage us is just to like let us explore that any and like pretend you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> just be interested, but like, let us, I think just give us space, like any personality type, right? You want to give space for their dominant function to thrive and like, you know, in a healthy way, obviously. But, so the way to, the way to encourage an ESFP would be like, oh, that was really fun when we did that experience together. I really loved it. Or like, Thank oh, you, you want to go do this do thing? That, or, you know. Go, enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, like go have fun, like go, you know. I'm not going to read into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like, exactly. Or you want to just like go climb a mountain by yourself and you don't want to sit and chat with me for ages. Yeah, sure. Go do that. Um, <laughs> but like, you always go to the extremes. I climb know, a mountain. I do. Jump off a cliff. But to be fair, you are quite extreme. I am. No, but anyway, anyway not, not really. really. Not what really. are you going to do? Not really. I'm like, yeah, sure. Go move to South Korea for like um, seven million years. That's Two fine. Years. I, I'm not hurt by that. <laughs> I won't miss you. It's fine. But I think for ENFPs, like a way to encourage them is like we have this this bubbly side of us, which is the side that we present to the world, not through any like um, duplicitous means or like fakeness or anything, but it's just what naturally you see of us because it's who we are, like it's part of who we are. But then we have this other side of us that you don't see as much, which is like the philosophical, like deep thinker who's like really smart and like wants to discuss all these like quite intense like to topics or whatever. I think if you have an ENFP in your life, just being like, hey, I see these sides of you I love all of them. Like I like I think you're great. Like if you do, you think you're great. Don't like make it up. Um, but if you want to affirm an ENFP, be like, hey, like I love this part of you and I love this part of you and like you know, recognizing that we're like complex, like any person, but we have these sides of our ourselves that are quite can seem quite like contradictory. Oh, or just like first exist in tension. <laughs> exist in tension. Anyway, but then as well to encourage any person, but like, yeah, an ENFP, just be like, yep, yeah, I see you. Like, I recognize the things you're doing. Great job. Keep being to you. To encourage any person, but to specifically encourage an any person. Yeah. Just be like, yep, yeah, I appreciate who you are. <laughs> like, who you are is worthy and I appreciate you. Okay, next question. <laughs> What's the best thing about being an ENFP? I love just being so, like nothing gives me a greater hit of like energy as when I can show, talk. be with, yeah, talk, but like show someone, like when you're talking to someone and, and they come out of the conversation feeling really good about themselves or feeling really inspired to do something or like feeling better about the world or like feeling more upbeat, um, you know. Upbeat. Upbeat. Surprisingly. Surprisingly. Upbeat. Upbeat. Um, comment down below if you get down that below. reference we love that. i love being able to like explore people like delve into people i love connecting with people i think you in a similar way probably think the thing you love most about being yourself is like probably would also be to like have good times like make people feel good yeah like that, sort of that thing. first function you can't help but love it the most yeah I guess. and just to like accept people to be a safe space for people to mm. exist the world would be a better place if we could all just accept who we are and be that yeah and like be who you are like be who you are unapologetically See, like she just did it again oh my gosh <laughs> I, yeah you're sorry i did you know, like, i was like be who you are and accept it you're like and be who you are <laughs> Different inflection. Okay, clearly <laughs> I haven't mastered the thing I talked about before about dominating a conversation. She doesn't need to apply social filters yeah. with me, but she does with the audience. Oh, like, it's you, but also we're talking in front of, like, I don't know like, how many subscribers. Oh my gosh, are you famous? Oh my gosh, can I have your autograph? <laughs> I, I think that's probably a good place to right. end it, right? Yeah, probably. Jenna has no idea how much of this I'm going to edit out. I'm going to have so much fun just, like... <laughs> oh, that thing you said that was footage. important. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> like, yeah. Learn how to say things quickly and succinctly. Yeah. But probably a lot of it is just waffle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, guys, we have covered all of the questions. How long did it take? A hundred hours. Literally two hours again. This took two hours. Wow, okay, that's not too bad. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We would really love to know what you thought of this video and any thoughts you want to share. I hope that having Jenna on the channel offered a different perspective about some things. Probably and similar kind of perspective, but I won't interrupt you. Slightly. <laughs> you will, though. <laughs> you will. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kill this part of yourself, Jenna. <laughs> Jenna, did you have any words about being on this channel? Yeah, I just want to say, like, I, I lurk in the comments a lot because I love what Kristen does and I obviously support her. Oh, biggest supporter. Yeah, love it, love it. So thank you for being kind to my sister. Like, oh, thank you cute. for appreciating the effort and energy. I don't think you realise, well, maybe a lot of you do, but, like, she puts a lot of time into this. So 
thank you. Give her some likes and subscribes because, I mean, that's what people say on YouTube. Yeah. They're like, give her some likes li li and. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you give it a like and a subscribe. Um, you know what? I don't do this for a living. <laughs> so I don't know how people say things. Thank you for supporting Kristen. Please continue to do so. I appreciate you guys very much. Yeah. This was just the first of uh, a, a series of sibling videos that I'm hoping to do if I can get the boys on board. Great! Jenna, thank you for coming on the channel. It was You're a pleasure so to have you. Yeah, it was great. I loved this second reshoot. I'm glad we reshot it because yeah, it does, the yeah. focus is better and the energy. Great. Great. as naturally as you know it doesn't it's you have to develop it it's the bottom two functions you have to develop them but we I just realized you wanted a response from me but I didn't know what you'd said because I'd asked out oh we love that it's great <laughs> everything, everything everything is great everything, everything is awesome everything, is, everything cool is cool when you're part of a team everything is awesome when we live in our dream <laughs> autonomy Social, Social energy. energy. <laughs> We've got different chips and salad. <laughs> bye, guys. Right, bye. See ya. This has gone on for long enough. Yes. Fuck them out of there with